I want to give a big thank you to Tilly Wines for helping us with this mini series focused on wine. This is actually the first time we're doing a live wine tasting. Surprisingly, we, we didn't do much alcohol focused tastings um, during COVID. So this is a first for us. I'm very excited. We have a second session on November 10th that will be focused on social sustainability. Um, and I just wanted to share, you know, when we first started talking with Tilia about this partnership, it became clear that um, we share many values and actually on their new bottle here, a lot of the values are printed on the back. And first off, you know, Slow Food is all about biodiversity. We have a real strong commitment to defend biodiversity and Tilia shares that by, um, you know, preserving and nurturing plants, insects and animals so that vineyards can adapt to changing sustain, to a changing environment and also to sustainability so that we can generate more resilient vineyards that need fewer external inputs to maintain natural healthy balances and productivity. And our guests will talk a little bit more about what that means during the session, but I just wanted to, um, to connect the dots here between why we're, we're partnering and excited to partner with, with Tilia Wines today. Okay, without further ado, let me introduce our panelists. And um, you both can turn your videos on so folks can see you. We have Guillermina Van Houten and Gonzalo Genza. Guillermina has always been fascinated by nature and understanding how it works. Born a scientist at heart, her focus is to care for the grape and its environment as a whole to create the best wines. Her passion for sustainability was awakened while studying in France. What inspires Guillermina about winemaking is the fact that a piece of Mendoza's land is able to travel to the furthest parts of the world in a bottle of wine. Gonzalo Genza was, believes his love for the vineyard started when he grew tomatoes, peppers, and squash in his grandmother's orchard. He is constantly looking to repurpose resources, save water, and turn off lights, a trait he got from his father, who is a professional electrician. Every weekend, Gonzalo walks seven blocks to his family home for a day-long asado and dreams of one day taking over the grill from his father. So we are going to actually be tasting wines on this session. I hope you are able to find these wines. They're very accessible. They're only $11. Um, we'll put in the chat where you can find them exactly. I have these bottles in front of me. I'll be tasting along with you and excited to learn from both of our guests. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Guillermina. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Um, well, um, I'm Guillermina van Houten. Yes, my name and surname are a little difficult to pronounce. Um, I'm an agronomist which means my work is to um, grow plants and to produce health food. And here at Celia, I care about sustainability in vineyards. Um, I was born and raised in Mendoza, but I did my master thesis in France. And I think it was there where I learned the importance of sustainability to produce uh, grapes. And uh, you know, I don't know if you can see the presentation, but... Um, Wait a minute. Yeah, thank you. That's a presentation. Uh, as Anna said, uh, Tilia label, uh, it was the first um, wine label in Argentina to carry the sustainability seal given by Bodegas de Argentina. And this certification is based on a protocol that gives us um, a list of standards, uh, which is audited and certified by a third party. And today there is more than um, 80 vineyards and wineries that have been certified in, in Argentina. And we are very proud um, of having uh, been the first one to carry the seal. And Tilia has always been driven by sustainability because we seek um, to create an action around sustainable living, not only in Argentina, but in the in all around the world. Cilia is made with uh, organic grapes. They are farmed by small growers and also in our winery. Um, and because these are uh, all small family producers, we haven't, uh, family producers, sorry, um, we haven't bothered them with all the paperwork or the certification uh, still, but all of our Tilia grapes will be uh, certified uh, organic uh, officially by 2023. Um, in 2020, you know, Celia started in 2015, but uh, in 2020, we uh, felt that 
it wasn't clear enough our pillars of sustainability in our label. So the label, the label was redesigned. And I think we, I will explain you today some of uh, the, the, these uh, icons or images you're seeing uh, here now, and I will explain you briefly what, uh, what each of these symbols uh, means. So this is the back of the, of the bottle. You will see in these five symbols. The first one talks about uh, social sustainability. And for us, um, social sustainability means that we support our community with a lot of social uh, social programs, but I like always to tell that the problem uh, maybe I love the most is uh, the one that we invite some interns, some local high school students to come to the vineyards and to work with us for a season. This girl in the photo and her friend and a young boy also all wanted to be police police officers. They have never been in the vineyard before and they didn't know how how was the work in the vineyard because they don't go uh, to the vineyards with their parents as they used uh, they used to before. So they did an internship with us and um, they experienced how we work and we share our know-how with them. And um, they felt it was a, a really good job, a great job to work with nature. So we encourage them to study uh, some agricultural careers and now, for instance, if today the young man works in the vineyard with us and one of the girls also changed her mind and is now starting to be a field technical. And uh, I feel this was a huge win for us because we promote them to stay close to their local rural communities. And this is really, really important uh, for sustainability. The, the other symbol is, um, we call it deeply rooted because uh, it refers to our traditions. And uh, I love to explain this with the vines, with a vine root. You know, vines have uh, has very extensive root systems to take water and nutrients from the soil. Malbec, for example, has a very deep root system, but without water, we won't have these deep uh, deep roots. So to water our vineyards, as you can see in the picture, uh, we still use the same sophisticated canals um, our native people use and design. A, a more than 600 years ago to make water melted from the Andes arrive to each vine. So it's a mix um, between our traditions and, and, and then we still use the same traditions that used to um, do the native people here in Mendoza 600 years ago. And uh, the, the other symbol talks about biodiversity and um, it's um, a, a biodiverse vineyard for us is stronger than one than one who is not biodiverse. But as it as it is our main topic today, I will talk about this later and will develop more my idea of biodiversity and the importance of it. And uh, we have another symbol also in the label that talks about natural resilience and has relation also with, with biodiversity. You know, I am a scientist um, at heart and I believe in technologies, but many times nature does best. So we just, uh, I think we just must, uh, we should observe and mimic nature. And uh, our idea is to rely on natural interactions to create stronger, resilient ecosystems. Um, but I also talk about this later with, um, when I talk about, I talk more about the biodiversity. And um, the, the last symbol is a bee because um, it means stronger together. We chose a bee because you know bees are really team workers and everything the bee does help us. So they represent what we need to do to work as a team. You know, the bottom line or the core of sustainability is that there is no one thing that will help you continue or will help us continue making wine for hundreds of years. It's a sum of things. So we won't be able to continue making wine without living there in a better shape that we found it. So that is not easy and there are a lot of threats everywhere, but uh, this is our idea. This is a group of things that we can do in our everyday lives. And that's why we say stronger together. It's a summary that reflects all of our values to honor traditions, to support the communities and uh, to respect nature. So in the next slide, I will talk to you uh, do not hesitate to stop me and to uh, make questions if, if you want. Um, 
And when I talk about biodiversity, you know, biodiversity means, uh, or if the definition is the variety of living organisms on Earth. And um, due to human intervention, we have a loss of diversity on Earth. And biodiversity is really important to have naturally balanced and resilient ecosystems. In, in our case, we want resilient vineyard ecosystems. When is it resilient? I mean, an ecosystem that will be able to recover quickly from difficult conditions. And uh, this is because uh, biodiversity provides us benefits. These benefits, we call, it, we call them ecosystemic services. An ecosystemic service yeah, is a benefit that we humans obtain from ecosystems di di directly or indirectly. So here, I want to share with you an example of a difficult condition that could be a pest. You know, new pests are very likely to appear, according to scientists, in this changing environment. So in this example, there's a little moth on the left of the slide, uh, whose um, young stages do a little hole in the grapes and feed on them. You are seeing the, uh, the little worm you see coming out from the grape. So this is one of the most important pests uh, for our vineyards. So in this case, biodiversity can give us a service that we call regulation. Our approach in Tilia, uh, looking for sustainable vineyards, is always to look for solutions in the interactions that we find in nature. So we call some local researchers that came to the vineyard and did a survey. And they found that we have more than 10 species of different predators that we call natural enemies for this moth that live that already lives in the vineyard. So I am talking about these guys you're seeing in the picture, flies, very little wasps, birds, and even bats. So some of these natural enemies um, will attack the eggs, uh, the, mo the moths, uh, moth eggs, others will feed from the worms and other from the adult moths. So the idea uh, was uh, where, what we were thinking was um, how can we improve the presence of this natural pest control in our vineyards? Well, science says that we should promote um, a really friendly environment for them to install and develop. So we have vegetation. I mean, we have another, other plants than vines, different than vines, growing within the vineyard between the rows. So we prefer to have flowering species, species, sorry, both native or seeded. So we let them grow because they will act like shelters for other prey for the predators we want to have. If these predators have enough to eat, their populations will increase and it can help us control the great moth I told you about before. Birds, for instance, they really like the arboreal and shrubby vegetation that surround the vineyards because they, um, they allow them to nest, to make their little nest there. there. So we will let um, some natural corridors with vegetation among the, among the vineyard parcels. And we also install some wood cages with the same purpose. Um, another example that I have, um, today is also related with to the previous one uh, is the vegetation that I told you before we let them we let grow in the vineyards we call them cover crops and this vegetation I'm telling you help us to have healthier soils with their roots they will give oxygen to the soil and promote the presence of a diverse community of microorganisms I'm talking about bacteria and some fungi which in turn will give benefits to the vines because they are really protagonists in the cycle of nutrients. So these nutrients will be available for the vines later. So as you can see, um, what, we want to, I, what I want to tell you is that um, it's a way of thinking. I mean, we are always trying to reduce inputs and rely more on nature processes. All is related, of course, and it's not simple because this takes a lot of time to learn and to understand how nature works. But I think, or at least Atilia with Gonza, we really believe that this is how we can contribute to, to sustainability. 
So I don't know. I hope you have a lot of questions about this. <laughs> and I think we can pass to Gonza if you don't have questions. Wonderful. I will I will come in with a few questions. Um, thank you so much for your presentation. It's so interesting to hear of the complexities that go into um, creating a bottle of wine. Um, one question that came up is about climate change. You know, we're hearing so much about climate change. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in slow food, we talk about climate change um, as food is or like industrial food can be a cause of climate change, but food can also be a victim of climate change. It can be damaged by climate change and it can also be a solution to climate change. So I just wonder if you could talk about how climate change has affected the vineyard, has it affected the biodiversity um, and, and how you're doing to, what you're doing to prepare um, for, for ongoing climate um, issues. Well, you know, a great example is here in Mendoza or in vineyards in many parts of the world really are looking for uh, more cooler, for, for cooler climates because, uh, you know, climate change rises, raises the temperature. And so we are looking for more freshness in our wines. And that's why we are uh, looking for, I don't know, planting vineyards in the mountains. This is a, a, a way to, to prepare for, for climate change. We are also in viticulture. There are also um, different uh, varieties that adapt less or more to different climates also. So we will look for different varieties. Uh, this is another. And uh, about biodiversity, well, it's really complex and it depends on each species, how it will, uh, how it will um, um, change or uh, if, if it will be benefit or not with the new temperatures, let's say. And um, another thing that we are here in Mendoza, we are suffering now is uh, about climate change is the lack of water. You know, we irrigate, as I said before, we irrigate our vines. And uh, we are we have a little very little little water. So we are trying to do is to apply water the more efficient we can or the more efficient as possible. We use drip irrigation in our vineyards to just uh, put the exact quantity that the vines uh, need to to grow and to to grow grapes and to ripe grapes. But um, Caring for water is really, really important for us. And this is an aspect of climate change also. Yeah, I know water is one of the, the most critical issues, either too much or too water. Is um, yeah, I, I wonder- Yeah, we if, cannot have wine, wine without water. Yeah, exactly. And I wonder, have you been impacted by any severe weather in the past two years? But any weather, um, any problem, any weather say? storms or any any weather issues that have um, impacted the vineyard? Yeah, you know, um, here in Mendoza we have hail hail storms, and they are mm -hmm. really it really it's a problem for us. That's why uh, I don't know you can see photos of pictures of Mendoza vine, uh, vines. They are always covered by a hail net because we have really really. Um, strong um, storms, uh, hail storms that can devastate our harvest. So mm. this is a, a thing and it's happening, it's happening more and more with this climate change. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine that can be devastating for the for the grapes. Um, for the grapes, you talk, yeah. yeah. You talked about predators and some insects. Um, we have a question here from Barkley about ants. Do you struggle with ants okay. at all? He says he's heard yeah. um, that that's one of the biggest struggles for organic producers in Mendoza. So if you could talk about ants, that would be great. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And as we grow our organic grapes, there's a, uh, you know, ants are really uh, easy to control when you, you have pesticides, but without pesticides in organic is a really, uh, is a big problem, a big issue for us. I have studied ants a lot. Uh, everyone called me the aunt lady at the, at the winery because <laughs> I always look into the ground. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Studying the ants. Uh, but they are, they are great, great organisms. Um, but at the same, it was the same. Uh, we are still looking for a, for a solution. But we, uh, and the, after uh, talking a lot with scientists, um, we learned that there is no only one solution for ants in organic production. 
Nowadays, we are uh, looking for some natural solutions. Let's say we are looking for natural enemies also. They are predators, but they are like fungi that lives in their own nests. So we are um, making them grow and putting, uh, using them to control the, the ants. But you know, it's always in a natural way, but it's a natural control. So it takes time. It takes uh, longer than a, I don't know, a pesticide, a conventional pesticide, but we, if that this is the way that we should do, we should grow grapes. And yes, the, it, 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 it's, um, it's true. We have a huge problem with ants, <laughs> but they are great, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> Spoken by a true ant lady. I love it. <laughs> the true um, ant lady, I, yeah. <laughs> Um, speaking of that move to organic, Stephanie, um, hi Stephanie, is one of our leaders at, uh, with Silk Food Vegas. I, she's asking, you know, what is that process like of going organic and how hard is it to actually make that transition away from um, chemical inputs to being completely organic? Uh, well, you have to change all the, 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 all the processes or, or you have to change your mind and start to uh, rely more, as I said, in processes to observe more, to uh, control weeds in not, because you have nothing to kill all weeds like uh, herbicides did. So you have to uh, not remove them all, but to remove just the one you won't have or just in the, to um, act in the right moment to control weeds. You have uh, another, um, you have different tools to act in organic. The transition takes three years. I mean, but before, but after the, the first year, you change and you start make, making all like the organic protocol say, says, but um, it's not after three years that you can, you obtain the real certification. And um, yeah, here in Mendoza, I think that the, the main challenges are ants, control ants and uh, some weeds also. I, I mean, weeds are the vegetation. I don't know if all know where well weeds are, are the vegetation that uh, surround the vineyards and the, in the vineyard that we want to control. Yeah, and, and speaking of that, a follow-up from a question from Stephanie is, do you need to reduce the vegetation between the rows um, of vines? How do you handle that vegetation? Um, um, well, water part issue of this organic mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's a challenge also when you have the water issue it's great so we are always thinking and letting vegetation but uh to to promote biodiversity to let them flower but not so much uh because if vegetation is for instance is if vegetation is too tall it can create like uh, um, a humid climate around the grapes and can can promote rot in grapes and this is not a, a good thing so uh, we are just uh, cutting the vegetation just some moments, some uh, specific moments. Um, but in general, we let them grow, and we are studying also which species we uh, we have to choose to let grow in the vineyards for the benefits. For uh, we choose them for the benefits for the services they will give us. Um, so it's complicated also, but we yes. In an organic vineyard, you have always more vegetation than in conventional one. Fantastic. Well, from ants, let's move on. Um, thank you so much, Gershomina. This is like so interesting and fascinating. Oh, thank you for um, the questions. If, <laughs> if people, if you have more questions, folks, continue to put it in the chat and maybe we'll come back to the end um, to Gershomina for some more questions. But right now I have yeah, sure. a wine glass that I'm wanting to fill. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it over to Gonzalo and see if you can walk us through some of these tasting notes. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Gonzalo Jensa. Uh, I am the winemaker for Tilia Wines. I have been working with Tilia for many years and I love it. Uh, I think uh, I found my passion for the vineyard and well making when I used to grow tomatoes, papers, and squash in my grandmother's orchard. And what uh, I think is most interesting about Tilia wines is that in most wine regions, 
you don't see it as many different grapes varieties being made uh, like we do uh, in Mendoza. Um, our wines are made from a blend of organic grapes that come from the south, central, and eastern region of Mendoza. Um, here in Mendoza, we grow grapes in, in a desert, uh, which is very unusual. Um, we add a high altitude because we plant uh, up the foothills of the Los Andes mountain, and we have this um, ideal condition of climate and soil that allow us to create uh, uh, these uh, seven varieties of wine. Um, they all benefit from the bright sunlight intensity, the cold night, healthy condition due to the dry climate and low, and low rainfall uh, to generate great concentration on, of flavors in, in the grapes. Uh, okay, we go to talk about uh, our wines. Uh, when we go to taste the wine, we first look at the glass to see the color and tonality. Uh, after that, we smell the wine and look for the aromas. Finally, finally uh, we taste the wine to feel all the flavors and enjoy a rich wine. At the end of the day, uh, it is about uh, what you like and what you enjoy. Um, okay, we go to start with um, with the Bonarda wine. Uh, it is our Bonarda. It is 2020 Bonarda. It's 100% uh, Bonarda and is my favorite favorite and Guillermina too, I think. Uh, Bonarda is a variety of Italian and French origin that is planted all over Argentina. It is the second uh, most widely planted red wine variety. It is known for having a lot uh, of fruit aromatic and bright acidity. It is a little later than Malbec, but we love it uh, because it is more similar to Dolcetto or Pinot Noir. It is a little lighter, uh, but with a, a lot, a lot uh, more, um, more texture. Uh, for when making, uh, you need to avoid having the, the wine have a head up. You need to keep it fresh with some of the of the skin, so that you highlight some of the fruit and nice uh, acidity. Uh, this wine in appearance, we can see um, violet color, uh, nose, nose packed with dark fruit marmalade and space flavors, has a sweet entry uh, followed by soft uh, round tannins, uh, ripe basil leaves, and blueberry flavors that linger on the on the palate. Um, okay. We go to talk about the Malbec. This one uh, is 2020 Malbec. is um, is 100% Malbec. Uh, Malbec has, of you may know, is Argentina's flagship variety. Uh, is the most uh, widely planted red red variety. And why is that? Uh, it is because Malbec is like uh, marriage uh, made uh, in heaven with Argentina. Uh, it does uh, very well here. It does very very well here in, in Mendoza. It has a, a deep root system. It loves the sunlight and it likes uh, the very dry climate because it doesn't rain a lot. And that is why 
it is too, so easy in Argentina to farm organically and sustainably. Uh, the Malbec is not for uh, its dark color. It is a very rich uh, wine. It is a uh, very complex. Um, what separates it from varieties like uh, Cabernet Sauvignon is that it, it has very, very uh, small tannins. Um, the, the one making for the Malbec is very traditional. We don't do much to the wine. We get the grapes, we press them, uh, we leave it alone and get this beautiful wine. Um, because of the high altitude in Mendoza, there is good uh, acidity. So you get this very rich complex uh very small tannins and nice uh, acidity uh, in this wine uh, in the view is a bright red color with intense violet uh, hues it has a, a fresh nose of violet and rich plum marmalade laced with maybe chocolate and vanilla uh, of flavors uh, a soft sweet entry leads to well structure and long persistent wine and I think that it, uh, it has around 20 time. Uh, okay, the last one is um, the Torrontes, is our Torrontes. Uh, Torrontes is the um, is a native variety from Argentina. It uh, originate uh, from the mix of grapes uh, came to the country in the 16th century with the Spaniards when they come to, to the Americas. Uh, it is a, a cross uh, of Moscat of Alejandria and Criolla Chica, and this uh, give us Torrontes. Um, Torrontes has a most amazing aromatic. They are terpenic, somewhat similar to the maybe a Riesling. Uh, it's very floral, very mineral, with a lot of uh, white fruit. Um, and I think that when you smell uh, Torrontes, you know it couldn't be anything else. Uh, it is a very, very fresh. Uh, it actually comes from the north of Argentina, from the province of Salta. That is uh, where the best Torrontes come from. Um, it's a very refreshing wine. It's a very good for the summer. I like for the summer. Um, the one, the one making is uh, without uh, any oak because we don't want to cover the, the beautiful floral aromas uh, of this wine. Uh, so we don't use uh, any, any oak. Um, we also have to protect it from the oxygen, close the tank uh, firmly and never let any oxygen because it is a wine that if you let any oxidation happen, the, you lose some of this uh, lovely mineral and floral aromatic. Um, in this wine, we can appreciate uh, pale yellow color with uh, greenish hues. Um, intense notes of passion fruit, citrus, and maybe freshly cut grass. Uh, it's a fresh wine, it's concentrated, uh, vegetal and tropical flavor uh, on the palate. And I think that it's a long and um, persistent finish. Uh, okay, this is all. Uh, thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Gonzalo. <clears throat> we have some questions here for you. Um, 
And please, if, if folks have other questions, please pop them into the chat. We'd really love to hear any specific questions that you have or anything about you know, how he approaches um, tasting wines. So can you talk about how long the, age, the wine can age and what is that process like? Lina, can you help me, please? Yes. ¿Cuánto tiempo podés añejar estos vinos? Puedes guardar estos vinos. I will, I'll, I'll translate to him. Okay. Uh, I think uh, we think that uh, it's a it's a young wine. Uh, I yeah. I prefer that. Uh, Te, te digo, Guille, eh, prefiero que sea consumido en el, durante el mismo año porque es un vino fresco para que resalta bien la fruta de cada región, pero eh, yo creo right. que dos o tres años no hay problema. Yes, uh, he said that um, we think that it's a, it's a young, they are all young wines, so it is, uh, we recommend to drink it in, during the year uh, or the year or two, but we have until three years. Um, because they are really to, to keep the freshness of, of each uh, of these varieties of wine, because this is uh, the most important for us. And this is what he looks for in the, in the winemaking process. Not for, not only, not the aging, but the, the freshness. The freshness, yeah, right, great. Um, and can you talk some about what your favorite food pairings are with these different wines? How do you decide what to um, what to put on your plate next to this glass, and um, do you have any suggestions uh, as people at home are tasting? Uh, yeah, well, Malbec goes always well with the barbecue, but um, Bonarda I like it with empanadas and Torrontes. I don't know. I always drink it um, like in summer. I don't know you, Gonza. Do you have any favorite pairings? Sorry, my Spanish. <laughs> I think that the Bonarda with a, is a perfect partner for an uh, asado uh, or barbecue. Uh, the Malbec, I I prefer the Malbec all time. <laughs> no matter where. I think that uh, is a very good with the. Um, with uh, every meat. Uh, yeah, or pasta also. Oh, pasta, yeah. yeah pasta, pasta also, I forgot about it. Yeah, yeah. it's really good with pasta. Um, Torontes, uh, I prefer the Torontes in the, in the um, um, uh, piscina, uh, in the um, uh, pileta or piscina. Pool. The yeah, the pool. pool, sorry. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. At the edge no, no. of a pool. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, and, and summer is great. On summer, yeah. And it's that only barbecue when you, yeah. while you're waiting for a barbecue in summer, you're drinking a seven day. Yeah. Maybe that should be my question, not what foods, but where? <laughs> where should we? <laughs> yeah, where? <laughs> the edge of a pool. Where we drink this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I just, just, I'm curious, which ones are your favorite? If you are, you know, just in the evening and you want something, um, a, something easy to drink, what, what's your go-to wine here? Yeah, mine definitely is Bonarda because it's soft, it's very, I don't know, easy to drink. Uh, I love Bonarda. Me too. Um, I think that Bonarda is, uh, is this wine uh, we can, we can show the, all the, um, the potential of the Eastern region of Mendoza. Um, yeah. It's a, a strong uh, structure wine, but uh, um, with a soft, uh, soft tannins. And I, 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 I like it. <laughs> it's perfect. Amazing. Um, so Mackenzie is asking, are Torrente characteristics like those of Sauvignon Blanc? Can you compare some of these wines with other, um, other types? Gonza, eh, es similar al Sauvignon Blanc, el Torrente. Es similar y 
tiene características similares, pero el, el Torrontés particularmente es un vino que eh, aromáticamente es diferente yeah. a los demás. No, es uh, he says uh, he has some specific characteristic that you you can find you cannot find in other wines like uh, this flower is very flower um, have a very flower notes and uh, no I would think that it's similar to Sauvignon Blanc um, I don't know you, you should say this. <laughs> taste it some are aromatic characteristic in common but when you put a glass um, uh, next to another, you will find a difference. But the Torontes is uh, unique, I think. Yeah. Excellent. Mm. Yeah. And are these wines um, from a single variety or are they blends? How do you handle that? Uh, yeah, they are single varieties and there's a blend only from Malbec Syrah. Yeah. Yes, all the others are Cabernet Malbec, just, just Hundred uh, percent varieties, except from the Malbec Syrah. Excellent. And um, Gonzalo, I know you talked about your father was an electrician, and now you're in this deep in the wine world. Can you talk some about your experience of learning wines and what made you interested in in learning? And um, and uh, did you get your father to like wines as he finishes a day of electrician work? Tu papá era electricista, ¿Qué, ¿qué vinos le llevas a tu papá o cómo tomas vinos con tu padre? Um, yo me junto dos o tres veces por semana con mis padres y es un gran aficionado a los vinos de, de Tilia, así que siempre le llevo una botella para convidar. Y ¿Which one? Uh, no, she, she, he says he also... Oh. Ah, ok. <laughs> the, he he um, sees her father three, two or three times a week. And he said uh, his father always uh, want him to, to take all the, all the line of Tilia and mm -hmm. say one day one, one day another. So his father loves Tilia. Amazing. So I, I personally have never been to Argentina or Mendoza. And I wonder if you could talk about what it's, what it's like there. Um, what what's the feeling of Mendoza? If you can talk more about that. Yeah. Um, well, what's the feeling of Mendoza? Um, I, I feel very lucky because here we have uh, beautiful views. We have the air breeze from the mountains and you can go just some kilometers from the city and um, enjoy being in the mountains and the wildlife and to do some trekkings and uh, I, I don't know we uh, we are all life here is very um, it's very slow also because we are all like rural communities and we all have some uh, some uh, parents or grandparents who work in the vineyard or uh, or something like this so we have all inherited like this kind of uh, kind of uh, life um, and that's why we named Tilia, uh, because uh, uh, Tilia is a linden tree. So uh, we wanted to reflect this calm that we have from rural life uh, in our wines. And I feel Gonza and I, we have, uh, we have both uh, family that are related with rural life in one way or another. Excellent, Gonzalo, it's, do you want to add anything about your feeling of Mendoza? I think that Mendoza uh, uh, is... Uh, ah, sorry. Uh, I think that Mendoza is, uh, is, is a great, is beautiful city. Um, the Uco Valley is fantastic for have a lunch with, with the family, with, with my friends. And when we go to to the Uco Valley, we pass uh, too many hours to uh, to look the to watch the the mountain because it's, it's beautiful. It sounds um, opposite of my experience in Brooklyn, New York. So I, <laughs> I'll come I'll come visit uh, soon. Yeah, yeah. 
It seems like it's a good fit with slow food. That's a lot about our, our um, you know, we try to talk to people and ourselves live a life of slowing down and embracing family and tradition. So I really appreciate that you have that same mentality there, Mendoza. Well, you know, even when I, I'm, I pass a lot of time like working in the office or in the computer, I, I feel the need to go to a vineyard and to walk through a vineyard and just feel nothing but the birds and, and, the, and the cool air. And this is so relaxing and so calming. And that's why I love my job. Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> coming to visit. You should come. You should definitely yeah. come. <laughs> yeah. Um, you should mean a, a question in the chat came through that kind of harkens back to the climate change conversation that we started. But um, the question here is, have there been changes in climate since you all have worked with Celia that you've noticed? And if you've noticed a change, um, how do you change your recipe or how do you change your approach to winemaking? Um, and maybe Gonzalo, this might be a tricky question, but does it change the taste of the wine as well in any ways? Sentís que el cambio climático cambió el, el sabor de los vinos, Gonza? No te escuché, perdón, se cortó. El sabor, que el cambio climático ha, ha cambiado algo en el sabor de los vinos, en esto desde que trabajas en Tilia. Yo creo que, que sí, hemos tenido, sobre todo tuvimos unos años muy lluviosos que se nos hizo bastante cuesta arriba, sobre todo para, para okay. lograr. There have been some, uh, bad, you know, climate, climate change uh, makes that uh, there are very extreme events or a lot of rain or anything uh, or no rain at all. And so he said that it was very difficult in the sometimes when it happens to have a lot of rain in, a, in just a moment concentrated, it makes very difficult to because it, it, it generates this rot or this kind of things. And um, it was a, it was a real challenge for him to to uh, to wine make to do wine making in that conditions. And yeah, I think that's me, something. Mm -hmm. It was uh, what I was talking before. I mean, there's more and more extreme events like a hail or frost um, or later frost that can uh, damage the vines. This is the thing that we are suffering um, a lot. Yeah, right. I think that a lot of um, farmers and agricultural folks are, are having to have a lot more flexibility and nimbleness mm -hmm. around that. and adapt maybe more quickly than is naturally the the way that we would adapt yeah um, right and this is where we're studying a lot and looking for <laughs> solutions but it takes time to study but climate mm -hmm. i mean goes climate change goes fast but well we're doing our best <laughs> yeah definitely um, so the next session on november 10th is about social sustainability can you give us a little sneak peek and preview of how Tilia works in the community or maybe some of the relationships that you have in the in the community in Mendoza? Well, I spoke a little bit later. We have a lot of um, programs. Um, I don't know, people that, uh, to, to help people to, to continue uh, living from the vineyard for, for the jobs they have in the vineyard. This is really important for us. And to, we help them with the kids, uh, with summer school programs, for instance, or that we put buses for people to go to the, for farmers to go to the vineyard, or this kind of internships I was telling you uh, before. But we have, we have some other programs also to encourage women, to, um, to help women with their kids, and, and so, that, so they can continue working with us. Uh, our communities are really important for us because without them, we won't have a vineyard. Um, and um, and I think, I don't know, we have a lot of programs. I, we will develop in the, in the next session, um, but this is the way we think. Yeah, you know, and with Slow Food, we talk about good, clean and fair um, as mm -hmm. part of food and wine. And I think that fair piece is 
what you're talking about here, right? Treating the laborers in a really equal way, in a way that respects the community mm -hmm. and respects the family. So I definitely um, appreciate yeah. that commitment. Mm -hmm. We make all our efforts to do that. Yeah, we are really conscious that we are an, an important actor in, mm -hmm. in, in this whole environment that is social yeah. also. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, how big is Tilia? Do you know approximately like how many people are um, working there? Um, you thought, but if you don't know, it's no. okay. Yeah. No, I don't know, honestly. Okay. Uh, mm. I, a lot. I, I, I don't want to say a number, a lot, but I don't want to say yeah. a, a number that is not real. <laughs> so no for problem. Next time, I'll, I'll yeah, say yeah, the, yeah. the right number. Um, so, perfect. Um, well, mm -hmm. no, I would um, thank me... people for the question. Yeah, let me just make sure I didn't miss any questions. If anyone else has questions, feel free to pop in the chat. Um, there was a question earlier about, you know, if um, distribution and sales, if you found that marketing your wine has become easier because, you know, consumers are looking for environmentally sustainable products. Maybe it's hard to tell from there, but do you notice any shift in the what people are asking for and looking for? Yes, I do notice that there is got like an increased concern for what we are eating and what we are drinking. <laughs> and and I think this is really important and I'm I'm glad that it happens. I don't know if uh marketing our wines has become easier that's not really my, my part but um but i i do think that it's really important that people care for what they are drinking and um, and that's why we made the effort with the label to represent that um even for a person that maybe cannot hear me today but <laughs> is drinking tilia wines in another part of the world um so yes uh I'm happy about that, that people get more and more involved in what they're drinking or eating. Yeah, that's so critical for, for people to ask questions about product, right? And start to understand the story behind how it got there. And then that also impacts, you know, now you're going for organic certification and it impacts the whole chain. So I, I yeah. love that, um, appreciate that commitment. We are almost at time, sadly. Um, I wanted to check if there's any other things that either of you want to add, any last um, comments about ants from the ant lady or um, <laughs> as we finish our bottle. I can talk about a lot about ants, but <laughs> no, 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 it's okay for me. I don't know if uh, there's no more questions. Uh, it's okay, but um, well, thank you all for the questions and for attending today. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Um, big shout out to Tilia for um, partnering with us on this Slow Food Live. Thank you all for sticking with this um, wonderful session and going through the tasting with us. It's certainly an, an education for me. So please stay tuned to our second in this series on November 10th. That's going to be um, a, a deep dive into that social responsibility question. So I'm really looking forward to that. We also, tomorrow evening, um, afternoon, we're doing a session around World Food Day with some indigenous producers here, Native American chefs and producers. So lots of good content coming mm -hmm. your way soon. Thank you so much, Lujermina, Gonzalo. Appreciate you spending an hour with us and um, we'll see you in Mendoza. Okay. <laughs> You're all welcome to Mendoza. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you, you all. Okay. Bye. Bye. Good night.